viewers and welcome back to another edition of 316 Automotive. What do we got behind us? It's a 2010 F-150. It's got about 161,000 miles on it. It's got the big 6R80 transmission in it. The owner says it's leaking fluid out of it. Red fluid. We're going to go find out what that's all about. Come on. All right, folks, here we are under the truck. There's the tranny, as you can see. And the customer brought it over uh, last week, and he brought over the, uh, the output shaft seal right there. He said, hey, I got a leak right here. And yeah, sure enough, there's, there's all kind of, it was very cakey down here. We've cleaned it off some, but there was a lot of buildup right below this. So I knew that was leaking. And uh, we took off the drive shaft and uh, pulled out the seal, inspected it. Yeah, there was some damage on the seal. So, yeah, in fact, it was leaking. So we, um, we put a new seal in there, put the drive shaft back in, and got him back on the road. And he called me up a few days later. Hey, there's still fluid leaking out of this. All right, bring it back. We'll see what else is wrong. Come back. This thing, the seal that we put in, nice and tight, as to be expected. And what we found is right here. See that connector right there for that big wiring harness? Right here. It's leaking right out of the bottom where that connector comes out of the case. So we had two leaks. All right, fine. So... Uh, we got the parts. There's a, a pass-through connector that I'll show you about, and I'll show you how to get this done. And it's not a terrible job. It's it's kind of a dirty job, but it'll be okay. All right, we're going to change out that that connector and uh, with uh, new seals on it, and it's going to be just fine. All right, folks. What you're going to need is you're going to need a a uh, transmission filter, and the part number for this. Let's see. There it is. It's a CarQuest 85954. That's what we got. Pan gasket. The filter already has its own gasket in it. You're going to need this pass-through connector here. Brand new one from Ford. It has got... There's two O-rings. My bad on that. And one serrated or ribbed gasket. There's what it looks like. That tab that you see in the bottom, that's going to go on the bottom. And the part number for that, this is a genuine Ford part. And so the Ford part, 6 Lima 2 Zulu dash 7 Golf 276 dash Alpha Alpha. And so, and then you're going to need, I told him to get uh, 8 quarts of, of uh, Mercon. Ford Mercon, and you want to get the LV for this job. And if we don't use all of it, then uh, he'll just have a couple extra quarts. That's no big deal. Better to have too much than not enough. You're going to need yourself a fluid transfer pump like this with a, a tube hook in it and, of course, to put the old fluid in. Now I'll show you how that works. All right, see that booger right there? That is the, where a dipstick is in, and that's the seal nut as well. That's where you refill it. That is on the passenger side, eh, sort of towards the front, about a third of the way from the front of the transmission. That is a 19 millimeter, so get you a big old metric wrench and get that off, and you'll see the dipstick in there, which I'll show you in just a second. There's the dipstick I was talking about, yellow thing. Pull that out and show you that right there that sticks in the transmission so here's a top tip though you see the catalytic converter right there muy caliente so let it cool off a bit until you can uh you can get your hands up in there to get get what you need to do so all right now that we've got the, the pan drained we use the the transfer pump and uh, drain the pan now we've got 
10,000 eight millimeter bolts all around the perimeter that you got to get off and then you can drop the pan so and when even though you drain the pan have a catch pan below it because there's going to be stuff that you couldn't get so definitely do that all right hey here's a top tip after you drop the pan and the filter there's the filter right there you see how the filter does not have a gasket on it that's because there's where the gasket is don't forget that get a pick and pick that thing out of there otherwise your new filter is not going to fit good all right here it comes it was really hard and it did not want to come out See, now you've got a clean hole in there, so that's a top tip. Another top tip. Here's the oil pan out. Look at how clean it is. You can even see around the magnet here. Yeah, there's a little bit of, little bit of smegma. That's to be expected, but you don't see any, any like metal that's like the size of grains of sand or something like that. This is completely acceptable. That's fine. And, uh, but if you saw chunks in here or, or sand size uh, metal, then, and you had uh, a good deal of it, you know, then that would be a, a problem. But look at how clean this is. This, is, this guy's gonna be great with this transmission. All right. Okay, here's how you get that connector off. We're at the rear of the transmission. You see this tab here? Rotate that up and it cams it out and then there comes your, your connector in all its glory. And that right there is the pass-through. And that's what's leaking. And I'll show you those seals here in just a bit and how to get that thing off. Okay, there's the, there's the valve body we took off the pan. You see this thing right there? That is a catch. You squeeze it, and then you can wiggle it down just like that so now it's it's down that's uh like a clevis catch that keeps that um that pass through um seated so now we're going to go to the back and we're going to wiggle right. it out. new pass through slid right in make sure to align the keyway on the bottom and then you're not going to be able to get the let me rotate this around you're not going to be able to rotate the pan or get the pan on Unless you put this locking clevis back in, so you can feel it lock in. I felt it snap in. Let's go back here. Make sure. Yeah, she is locked in. Here's a top tip. When you're doing this job, you see all your pins in there? Make sure they're all pretty well flush where they should be sticking out so that uh, they make good connections with the pins inside there. And you can see that on both ends, but you come over here. Let me see if I can do this right. You'd, if the pins weren't seating, there are little uh, seals that are around the, each of the wires and they will ooch themselves out uh, sometimes because those, uh, the receptacle pins in here will break off. I'll show you an example of that in a minute. And if you see those round seals around the wires come poking out, that's a dead indication that, oh, you got a problem there. So depin that, pull it out and uh, fix the problem you see this little booger right there remember when I did the, um, the fuel injector connectors on the Saab that blue connector that blue seal right there around the wire is exactly what you're looking for in that one out there but 
it's, you know, the color is not going to be, they're going to be whatever they are. This just happens to be blue. So you look for those boogers poking out proud and poking aft of the rest of them, and that'll be a dead giveaway. Now this connector here, this is a spade connector, so that's not, that's not uh, what's in there. They got round pin connectors, but you get the idea. All right. All right, there's the filter installed. I've got it held up with the light. Uh, a little bit, I'm gonna get the light out of there because I got the pan right here and it's all set to go. You can use the ratchet too if you want. Fit. Up there it's kind of tight. All right, we've got the, Patrick's putting in the, the last of the, the bolts for the oil pan and and we've got the new filter in there. And of course, you've, we got the pass-through already in. And so then we're gonna adjust the fluid level. And I'm gonna show you that right now. All right, I'm gonna show you a top tip here. You've got the dipstick here. And you see right here, you've got the hash marks where you're supposed to be in. Well, when you're cold, what you want to do is you want to fill the uh, transmission, and we're going to do that with the pump, and you want to get the level up to the bottom where my finger, that my fingernail is, the bottom of the hash marks. Run the transmission a little bit since the truck's up in the air, get it circulating around, but the level should stay at the bottom of the hash marks and so keep filling until you're there consistently and then that's a good level so when you're running around on the street it'll it'll expand and it'll get hot and it'll it'll go up into the the hash mark range all you need to be is at the bottom when things cold all right guys i got a little update for you uh pat and i did the rest of the um the fluid fill for the transmission and got the level right and the customer was down the road and everything was happy Couple days later, customer calls me back, and he's in a panic. He's running around town here, and his transmission fluid temperature gauge is spiked. Uh, he's in a limp home mode, and he's got a burning smell that he smells somewhere in the vehicle. And I, so, what the heck's going on? What have you been doing? Well, it, he says he thinks it's one of the wheels. All right, if you can make it over here without burning yourself up, come on and get back to the garage and we'll see what we can do. He manages to uh, get back here in probably 20 minutes or so, something like that. And sure enough, what it turns out is he went to another garage because we were full up at the time we did it. We took care of his transmission, but he wanted a complete brake job done on the thing, rotors, everything. And uh, we, just, we couldn't accommodate him. We just didn't have time. So he went to another garage. And they did the whole works on him. And turns out that the front driver's side brake caliper got locked up. And of course, the thing's got 160 plus thousand miles on it. So that uh, wheel and that hub was very, very hot. I managed to get the wheel off and, and uh, let that thing cool down. And uh, tell them exactly what happened and here's how it works as far as those brakes vis-a-vis -vis the transmission fluid temperature when the transmission is working against the braking system man that's going to spike the, the temperature in there uh, and so the, the transmission gauge that just went to the top because the fluid temperature gets so hot when it's fighting against the brakes that the thing goes into the limp home mode. So I cleared all the codes. I explained to him how this works. What's the connection between the brakes and the transmission fluid temperature? He understood, and he's going to go back to the first garage. And he's going to get him to uh, put some new uh, brake calipers on the front at the very least. That's it for this episode of 316 Automotive. Y'all have a good day.